apart from one man here, far too young to know the uh, the album that I'm talking, I'm going to read about. So whatever, it's called New Boots and Panties, two, 2014 reprise. <laughs> It ain't not knowing that your mind ain't moving when you answer to the name of Trevor. Clever Trevor. However, sung Ian Jury with his band, The Blockheads, back in 1978. Not physically tall, suffered polio in the iron lung when small. Later in his own words became spasticus, artisticus, and very, very famous and his reasons to be cheerful. It ain't not knowing that your mind ain't moving when you answer to the name of Trevor. However, he owned a punk-wise genius for instant gratification. A slanguage, a bit of the other language, that's right, slanguage, on a mission to rout the tedious around us. Meanwhile, Keep your mind alive and your aim straight and true. Make hay while the sun shines out of my behind. Keep calm and don't worry. Let free your fury and thank you, Mr. Spasticus Artisticus. Thank you, Mr. Ian Jory. It ain't not known that you mind any when you answer to the name of Trapper. Thank you very much. Next. Ugh. I'm going to hold this one up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a longer, this is a longer piece. Um, it, it's a muse upon tourism within Canterbury and it's no less amusing burgeoning everyday confusions, entitled, In God's Good Hands, also known as the Reluctant Tourist. <coughs> she ordered them to look at the door! Then the timid group of tourists she led around the sites of Canterbury City, <coughs> the door in question, and quite obviously not to be overlooked, is the one everybody knows, now presently entrance exit of a bookshop situated at the north end of Palace Street, now quaintly renamed the King's Mile. Strange, as it's barely 300 yards long. But anyway, she bellowed once more, Look at the door! Now resembling some exasperated schoolmistress from days long gone, pointing. The group, looking somewhat non plus scrambled for their mandatory digital cameras. An unshaven man dressed in bright orange shuffled about beside them with an odd hook-shaped instrument, picking up all sorted things with it, then stuffing them into his bag. Apparently he's called Mr. Serpo, as it's emblazoned upon his, <coughs> the back of his fashionable waistcoat. He does this with expertise as if he's getting paid. Meanwhile, at the other end of the city, two elderly women friends had spent a good hour and a half searching for the famous cathedral's entrance. On approaching the Westgate Towers, one friend said to the other, pointing at the ancient towers with great relief, at last, there it is. Outside of the actual cathedral's Christchurch gates, a middle-aged bearded fellow is sat sipping at a large cafe latte whilst frantically stabbing his laptop with his two index fingers. He'd, he'd just had a short but no less cathartic walk within the cathedral and was googling in Marks and Spencer's website. He needed to know whether they may have any hair shirts available left in his side. <laughs> Meantime, inside the cathedral's nave, Berger, Sally, was being addressed by an American tourist fellow who, upon asking Sally's status within the cathedral that evening, Sally replied, I'm a verger. 
The American took a moment, confused at what he'd heard, asked, was that a job description requirement? <laughs> a verger, Sally reiterated. I showed people around answering their questions, smiling dutifully. Outside, Mr. Serco ambled past with a fixed expression upon his face, still picking up his minutiae. Just down the street, Sun Street, people from all over were milling about, scrambling for their umbrellas or some indoor shelter from an imminent shower of rain. Outside of the elegant Marley Theatre, a family with two young teenagers were passing by. The father took an interest in the newly erected statue, caricature of the late fundraising comic Dave Lee, that literally sits there. The father informs his children that must be the be Christopher Marlowe, after whom the theatre is named. His mistake could be forgiven as it isn't stated whether it is or it isn't. The rain clears slowly, refreshing and leaving the pavements and cobbles gleaming like some semi-precious stones. The ducks sat upon the river Stour's edge do not appear very impressed. Not a good day for the ducks, sir. The punts, skippered by young, mostly men in Panama hats, relayed their pretty punters up and down and up and down the river. The look at the door, woman, has calmed down somewhat and is now stood with her brigade of tourists upon the East Bridge, opposite the historic Pilgrim's Hospital, where she's trying to convince her now attentive group, and perhaps herself, of the logic, illogic, practice and function of the medieval ducking stall. Mr. Serco passes by, looking ever more remote. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Right, um, just to uh, end with um, a short perhaps daft, but genre unknown. Frankly, I find it highly absurd. It must be as more absurd than I think. Or perhaps a mistake, calling a fish a perch, when surely, 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 this is the Alan Pinnacle. It should surely be a bird. End. <laughs> <laughs>